Welcome to a new video, today I'm going to show you how to do a set extension inside of Adobe After Effects so you too can turn a shot like this into a shot like this. Before we start, let me give you an essential tip for the shooting process. Try to get the camera very high on a tripod or even on a small hill so you can frame the actor in a way that the head does not go above the horizon line. This will become important later. First, we start with importing our clip into After Effects and create a new composition. Then we trim the clip so we only have the few seconds we need and trim the work area to our composition length. Next, we draw a mask covering the horizon and inverting it so the horizon or sky disappears and we are just left with the character walking in the foreground. Again, if you shot it right, the head shouldn't go out of the frame now. Now that we are left with the actor and our pre-selected set, we can build our entire new scene where we can create a whole new world if we want to. I will show you my example of a post-apocalyptic field. First, I dropped in this stock image of a hill in the sunset I found on Pixabay. You can of course get your stock images or footage wherever you want. Pixabay is free, so I got it from there. Anyways, I'm not sponsored. If you want to sponsor me, hit me up, but you can of course use Storyblocks, Adobe Stock, Shutterstock, do what you want. There are a few sites that you can get your stock footage linked down in the description. Also, don't worry about the color matching and overall matching process for now. We will do that as we go on with the tutorial as well as in the end. Just be maybe a little bit careful too as where the lighting is in your scene when you select the stock footage. Maybe don't drop in a clip where hard sunlight is coming from the left, then a house where the sun is coming from the right, and a hill at night. Maybe, maybe don't do that. But I think for my shot it worked out pretty fine. Once we adjusted our background layer, we have to create some atmosphere. This is very important. The farther something is back from the camera, the less we can see it because of the particles in the air. You can see this in real life when you're watching mountains way in the distance. It appears their opacity is down to 50 or 40%. In real life, of course, you know what I'm talking about because of the distance between you and the thing you're seeing. So to transition from the foreground to the background, we create an adjustment layer for the middle ground. We put that on top of the composition and draw a mask that covers the screen from left to right, as well as both our real life shot in the foreground and our digital stock asset in the background, just like this. And also we turn the mask feathering to around 150. It was 164 for my shot. Then we put the Lumetri color effect on the adjustment layer. And this is of course, always depending on your exact shot. But for my project, it was a temperature of 56, hue of minus 7, I set the exposure to 1.2, the contrast to 130, the highlights to 48, the shadows to 119, the whites to 150, the blacks to 110, and the saturation to 67. As you will hear me say a lot in this and the next tutorials, sorry that my After Effects screen recording is in German, by the time I did the screen recording back in April of 2020 when I released this short film, damn that's a long time ago, my channel was in German, now I'm doing videos in English and I already switched my after effects language to English, which means that the following tutorials from now on will be in English, but this one is still in German. I of course will tell you every term that I'm adjusting or using in English. If it's still confusing for some terms, there is a translation of all the terms linked from German to English or the other way around linked down in the description. Again, if you haven't watched the short film this scene is from already, it's also linked down in the description or right up here. It's in English, so you will be able to understand it. Next, I looked up some clouds and found this image of a mountain with a very cool looking sky that I thought I could use for this post apocalyptic scene. So I downloaded it and just used the portion of the sky, not the mountain. And this is one great tip to remember when using stock footage. If you find an image where not everything is suiting your scene perfectly, you can use portions of the image and build your final scene the way you want. You can get very creative here and the possibilities are endless. Which is exactly what I did for this image. I just used the sky to create even more atmosphere around the mountain to really glue everything together and build the scene the way I imagined it. You can mess with the opacity until it fits perfectly. For me, it was 73%. Then I drew a mask around the sky just to clean things up. It wasn't necessary because you couldn't see it anyways since it was behind the field layer, but I certainly just felt like doing it. Next I noticed that my head was going outside the previously mentioned mask, so I didn't stay in the predefined zone I wanted to stay in, which would destroy the whole effect if I left it in there. And since I didn't want to manually mask out the head for every frame, I tried keying it. So I duplicated the layer we shot and deleted the mask. Then I threw on a color key, selected the green of the trees and played with the tolerance, but that didn't work. So I drew another mask this time slightly higher above the horizon line. I just now realized that the 2% tolerance on the key was kind of pointless and you can just do the mask without keying I guess. Maybe the keying works for your scene. If you have a rich green try a normal key. If your character is against a bright sky try a luma key. If it's like my shot just do a mask. The leftover green in the background now gave me a kind of forest vibe so I had the idea to search for a tree line to put in the background. This is what I ended up with and now comes the fun part of really building your scene. I love this. This shot looks totally out of place 
piece and like it would never fit right now, but it will. First I scaled it down, then I made a rough mask around it, put a luma key on it and set the threshold to 146, the tolerance to 142 and the feathering to 3.2. Again this will be maybe different for your scene, but I will try to link every asset I use down in the description if I can find them. Again it was almost one year ago, but I think I maybe can find them. And then you can use my settings at least to keep them out if you want to use them in your scene. Not to color match them, but to keep them out certainly you can do. As you can see this looks pretty rough right now, but once we put it in the background it will work perfectly. So we scale it down even more and put it in between the mountain in the background and the clouds and the real life shot as well and the atmosphere adjustment layer so it looks like the trees are coming out of the ground of our original shot. Then we put on a Gaussian blur, set it to 65. Now because of the atmosphere and since they are so far away in the distance they appear like just some trees in the background no one would ever question. Also they glue everything together so the mountain in the background doesn't just come out of nothing but the bottom line is hidden by the trees. Next I just copied the tree layer a few times and put it across the whole horizon but I switched up the mask a few times, sometimes using just the left side of the image, sometimes the right side and I also used the mirror effect to make the trees seem a bit more random, otherwise you could tell that the whole tree line is just copied and pasted. After that I put a Gaussian blur of 15 on the mountain layer because I forgot that in the first place and it of course had to be a little bit out of focus to seem realistic as well because it was of course way back in the distance just like the trees. Now we still had this grass left on the bottom and I wanted this scene to take place in a huge stone field so I had to remove the grass. Since this shot is currently 16 by 9 and the final short film will have a 2.35 to 1 cinematic aspect ratio I could just cut out the grass this way but I figured I want to have this little handheld animation looking up and revealing the mountain in the background so the grass had to be removed. Also if you want to have this cinematic aspect ratio layer there's a free download link down in the description. It's in my self shop you can also buy a big pack with every single aspect ratio that I made but the 2.35 to 1 cinematic aspect ratio 4k version is of course free down in the description for you to download. I took some pictures of the stones on set for this purpose but I don't know what happened with them I think the perspective or the light didn't match so I just took a still frame out of this video when I wasn't in a shot already because the light and perspective are the same because it's from the exact same video and it just had to be rough anyways because it's just there for a few frames and shaky and out of focus you get the point. So I duplicated the layer renamed it Stonefield just for a better overview, went to the first frame where I'm not in the shot already, took a still frame, masked out the section of the stones, put the mask feathering to 40 and dragged it down over the grass. Then I readjusted the mask, duplicated it one more time and dragged it down one more time to cover the rest of the grass. Then I noticed I got it too far up and covered my legs, be careful with that, so I did another mask readjustment and duplicated it three times in total. Then I created a new adjustment layer, masked around the part of the duplicated stones and put a Gaussian blur set to 5 on it. Then I duplicated this adjustment layer, set the Gaussian blur to 16 and dragged it down a little bit. I then repeated this process a few times, copying it and dragging it down so that it kinda looks like a natural shallow depth of field and hides the fact that it's just copy and pasted stones. Of course you can still tell, but once the cinemascope and handheld movement is on it, it will hide it pretty good for those few seconds. The last thing I did was feathering the atmosphere layer even more to blend everything in and really glue it together and that's it for the work in After Effects. Then I just put a quick handheld and upwards motion on it and a lot with some realistic motion blur This is really important to make everything look realistic and switch the composition to a cinematic aspect ratio And we're left with this result and that's already it from this video I hope you enjoyed it if you did be sure to leave a like and also consider subscribing for more filmmaking content Next week we're going to learn how to make a set extension for a drone shot if it's out already It's linked right here and on this side you can watch the final short film virus until next time. Goodbye